Before we move to our panel, let me ask if there's one or two questions for Dr. Simons. Governor Granholm? Chew. Excuse me, I'm still chewing on my cherry pie. Um, <laughs> from Michigan. From Michigan. Um, <clears throat> It's Michigan huh. cherry pie? It is Michigan cherry pie. All right, yes. it's, it's all right I'll have to. All right, we'll, save, get, you, we'll get you a piece when you sit down. Bite, if you would. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like that. Um, what is the cost of the private initiative that you're doing in New York City? Right. It's about, it's of the order of 25000 all in uh, 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 per person per year. That's about what it costs. It's, uh, if you, it's front loaded a little bit because of the tuition and the, and the fellowship in the first year, then it drops down, then it builds up again. And if you carried it on uh, at the $20,000 a year per, per teacher forever, uh, then add administration, this is $25,000. So there are 350,000 or, Erwin, is that right? How many math and science teachers we got in America? 400,000, okay, fine. So if 20% uh, of them, which I believe is 80,000, and 25,000 dollars a head. I believe that's what we get the two billion from. That's Another math. question. That's good math. Governor Easley has something. Uh, we tend to think of high school as grades nine through 12, and middle school, you know, five through eight. And you mentioned uh, high school, but you said seven through 12. Is right. Something, something about getting them earlier that you think is important. It's, I think it's extremely important. I'm not quite sure how to do it. I'm looking at the grades where we actually have people called math teachers or science teachers. Uh, and I think we, we, we certainly have that in, in 9 through 12, and I think we have that in, uh, in, in 7 and 8 as well, typically. Maybe even 6. Wherever you have math and science teachers, this is where this particular program focuses. I have to say, the lower grades present a conundrum. Uh, I, I think there are solutions to that problem. Uh, I, I know of a good one. But I don't know how practical it is. You know, in, in, in China, you have a math teacher for math from the time you're in first grade. And, uh, and they follow you all the way up. They have a coherent curriculum. You just step out of class or she comes in or whatever it is. You have math teachers all the way up. We don't have that system in the United States. And that is a solution to the problem. But it's, uh, it means one that has to, you really have to change the way business is done. And uh, so I don't know. Uh, obviously, you don't need to know as much math to be a, a first grade teacher as you do to be a 12th grade teacher of, of, of math. But, you know, it's amazing. I mean, the, it is a problem in the lower grades. I, I interviewed all the teachers in my son's fancy schmancy private school about 15 years ago because I was worried about math and the principal of the school said, oh, it's great, uh, math is great. I said, okay. He said, talk to the teacher. So I did. So I started with the first grade. I figured I'd start with the first grade. So this was a typical response. You ask the teacher, well, tell me about how you're teaching math. And they'll giggle a little bit. And the two, well, you know, math, <laughs> math is really not my, my favorite subject, right? Not my strong point, math. That's a typical response. But fortunately, we have Ms. Schmertz down the hall here. She has all the rods and the staffs or whatever the heck it is, and uh, we have a problem teaching math while well, we turn it over to Ms. Schmertz. Now, imagine that that woman said, well, reading is not really my strong point. You think, well, reading isn't your strong point? You're teaching first graders? What, what, what are you doing? What are you doing there? But, uh, but for her to say, well, math is my spunk, it was like a little joke between us. Well, okay, it's... Uh, it's Mildly amusing, but it's not. <laughs> but it's not encouraging. It wasn't. It wasn't encouraging. So I don't. It's a problem, Governor. It's a real problem in the lower grades, and, and I don't have. I don't have the answer. Let's t let's take one more question, and we'll move on to the panel. Governor Breslin. Um, I know you've only had it going four years, and it's believable, certainly, that that kind of content knowledge you're talking about would lead to better results. Do you have any evidence at this point that, in fact, you're producing children out of high school with bigger skills, better skills in this area? Well, we're, we're starting to try to measure that, and, and the answer is, of course, we don't have any kind of definitive evidence except the obvious thing that it's better to know something than not know something when you're proposing to teach it. However, what we are finding is that the the uh, uh, principals are now asking for our people to come in and teach in their schools. So uh, someone thinks we're doing things right. Pardon me? 
I mean, you could uh, measure SE, but you need a, a reasonable number uh, in order that you can, you can, and you have to make sure you're making the comparisons right, and it says, oh, well, but this class was not the same as, I mean, this is not an easy thing to do with small numbers in early days. But it's an article of faith. It's better to know what you're teaching than not to know what you're teaching. <laughs> okay.